We're back at Beamer and Sun Garage. Uh, it's been a hot day today on a Saturday. Uh, you remember what we had this uh, mudding, going mudding. This is a, really a takeoff from that, but this car was over there in the field there by where we went mudding. This is my 65 Poncho. It's a 65 Catalina. It's a two-door sports coupe. Uh, we showed this car before. It's been sitting in the field over there, so we got it running for the first time this year. It sports a 389 big block two barrel engine, and it's got one of them HEI distributors in the back. And uh, there's that same uh, same battery coming out of Fifth Avenue that's now being passed around to car to car. I didn't want to in this heat. I didn't want to take a chance of having a dead battery. And it's got a new master cylinder. It's got a rebuilt windshield wiper motor. I've done a lot of work to this car. It's got all kinds of new seals and gaskets and all kinds of new stuff on this car. It needs some upholstery work. The front seat has been like that, so we have to. Uh, there's a possum. I told you there's there's possums. Remember I told you around here. There we go. Let me poke this possum. He's sitting on the front seat. Ah, ah. Oh, it's a fake one. <laughs> fooled everybody this car's got a cool dash in it. it's all chrome gauges on this car it's really intrigued me about this car oh my was my first car was a 65 Catalina just like this and it sported this uh, Venturi interior package that this car has got and we just love this car my son bought this car for me and it's got a little emblem right there Right underneath the Catalina, it says Venturi. That's a Venturi interior package. The one I had in high school was a four-door, uh, and this is a two-door sports coupe. So this is like this is identical to the two-plus-two two, uh, Catalina uh, that they had in this particular year. I love the back of this car, 65 taillights. And, yeah, you can see I'm a pack rat, and we've got to clean this one out next. It's all full of cardboard and parts and... All kinds of, you know, stuff. The hubcaps are in there. Those are the original 14-inch hubcaps with the spinners on there. I love these 14-inch hubcaps. Pontiac Motor Division. Right on it. Yeah, we gotta, uh, we got to address this car now. Clean it out. Clean it up. And uh, we got the uh, Fifth Avenue now coming together up on the hill here. We changed the oil. And we did some sprucing on it. Uh, the 65 Mustang, remember how covered with dirt it was. We've cleaned it on the outside. And it's looking a lot better than it was the last time you guys saw it. It had like an inch of dirt all over the car. And we cleaned it up. We went down to the dollar store and got some of that spray tough stuff that you can get at any department store. It's called tough stuff. And we just sprayed it on the car and wiped it with a rag. And it came out, uh, came out looking pretty good. It's got a really nice paint job. We haven't even waxed it yet. But the, uh, the Fifth Avenue, as I was talking about, we did a little sprucing on it. And uh, you guys remember all the debris that was up there. We uh, pulled that ducking right there and got a shop back. And we, we found all kinds of wasp nests and uh, uh, mouse nests inside underneath of this right here is what I'm referring to. We shopped all that out, and it was just a mess. But she's getting better. You know, we're cleaning her up, making her nice. And my son's 65 Mustang, the last time you saw it, it was really just looked really rough inside. And we cleaned it up, too, inside. Of course, now we piled it back up. But we, uh, we cleaned it out. And dried out the floor. And it looks a lot better. It's sporting the wrong console in it, too. It's another Mustang 2 console. But this car got a complete, I mean, a complete uh, overall repair. It got the under the seat pan, which is underneath the rear seat. It got full length floors. You can see, I, you know, the welding. You know, the welding it was done on this car. That I did every stitch on it. These are new. These are seat risers. Those are new. So yeah, we cleaned this car out. We, you know, got the water out of it, dressed it. Uh, we're gonna have to do a little sanding. Looks like it got a little surface rust right here. 
that's a new floor pan I put in, so that makes me sick. And I let that go like that. So we're going to get that fixed up. And uh, she'll be as good as new. We're not going to let that happen again with this car. But we're back over here. Of course, you can see there is a radiator for it. It's a brand new radiator my friend Joe bought for it. And we need bumpers for the back of this one, too. The bumper that was on it was total junk, and so we got to get a new bumper for it. And, uh, yeah, we'll do the trunk next time. But you can see the, the ranch are doing its job here. The trailer's getting a little fuller. More junk's going in it every day. There's a muffler now. That's, uh, I throw it up in it. Old rusty muffler. Came off that, uh, that Riviera. It fell off of it. Here's the back of my house. It used to have a trailer that sat right there where all them weeds were at. And uh, they tore the trailer down. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a jungle now. But that's the back of my house right there that my mom and dad bought for me. And that's a porch right there. You see kind of like a, oh, it looked like a Hoboke. It is Hoboke. Hoboke uh, building made onto the house. It's a, that's an outside porch. But the trailer had a separate power meter. And there's the meter. That's a separate meter for the for the trailer that was to the back. So this ha this place has three separate meters. It has a meter for the back of the house for a trailer. There's another separate meter for the house. And then another one for the garage. So there's three separate meters that power everything around here at Beamer and Sun Garage. Uh, that meter there is dormant. And, of course, you can see the cars that we have here. This is a lot of them. On our last installment of uh, our going mudding, we got the, the little uh, green monster stuck in the mud. And we got it out now. There's all kinds of wheels everywhere. There's aluminum wheels everywhere around this place. We got all kinds of parts here. This is my son's Tempest. After we pulled out the uh, the green monster, we hooked the white truck up, which is our wrecker, to the Tempest. And we pulled it out of the field too. So now we got this coming. We're gonna start we're gonna showcase this car. We're gonna go ahead and put pans on pan belts on it and get the radiator hooked up and, and bolted in there. It's just basically just kind of sitting there. Need to get that bolted in there. We're gonna get this car going. It needs tires. It's a really a neat car. I got this strap right here. Uh, these old cars don't have lock steering. But this strap here is Ernest Holmes. And you can see it says Ernest Holmes right on the belt buckle. And there it is. Ernest Holmes. I got that from Rondo. And that's how I keep the steering by myself uh, from turning on me. But we hooked it up with uh, the sling. And you can see the board there, so it doesn't bend up the back of the car. We got the, we got the board underneath of it, so it doesn't tear the back of because it will tear up the back of the car. It will destroy them. But getting back to the, the green monster, we finally winched it out today. We worked on it a little bit yesterday, gave up, came back at it today, and we were successful. And here's the remnants of the green monster of the uh, creek jump. And you could see all the debris and mud that happened when we tried to jump that creek. It just caked it up. It even did some damage there on the front splitter. You can see the plastic splitter right there. Well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little hurt, just the splitter. But she caked it. This wheel's completely caked. It was completely buried. And it was a real painstaking uh, ordeal to get it out. It really was. There's another one of my challenges over there. That's that got the extra 3D3. That car was a 318 car. And I want to put it back 318. So I want to take that 383 out. I think I'm going to put that in my son's uh, charger. But there's a, there's a hole she was. We came down over here. And then we went right into the creek. Trying to jump the creek. And of course you can see where we hit. We went dead into that pile of mud right there. And it, it, it stopped us dead. And yeah, he, he, it was crazy to try it, but 
that's what we do here at Beamer and Son Garage. We do crazy things. You ask for it, you get to see it. So leave us a comment if you got something else you want to see us do or try to do. I was thinking about moving these cars over here and actually putting them ramp and ramp it and actually jump it next time. But there's a there's a big pile of mud right there. I was down there with a shovel trying to dig it out. And you can see the, the left front of the wheel left that hole there. And that one there was left by the right front. So, yeah, she was down in there pretty good. We finally got the wrecker. Uh, we actually took the wrecker and the rollback over there. It took both trucks to get it out. I had to use a wrecker to raise it up in the air and then put blocks under it. I raised it up and put blocks on it right here. Then I came back with a rollback and then drug it up on the bed. But, yeah, you can see the wrecker got stuck right here, the white truck. There's the remnants of it. It dug some trenches there. It was it was not buried, but it, I mean, it's down there pretty far. Yeah, my foot's clear down in the in the rut. She's about done. I got the roll back over here, and it took both trucks. I didn't videotape it because obviously I was busy with two trucks, working two trucks. So it took two trucks to get it out, but I have two trucks. I got a bunch of more trucks, of course. You know, there's a record there. There's another record there. Uh, there's a half a wrecker over there laying on the ground now. I hit it with the Omega. That was a wrecker at one time. But, uh, you know, my good truck is the uh, boom truck. It's got the winches and the capability uh, to probably do it by itself. Uh, when I did get it out, it just about flipped over on me. The truck did. The Green Monster just about flipped over off the rollback. But I finally got it up on the rollback. You know, I had to use the white truck to raise it up. And basically, I, I raised the back of it up like that and I blocked it up with some blocks right there you can see the marks where the blocks were and I set it on the blocks and I come back I got the roll back and I drove the roll back across here and back to roll back in and I rolled the bed down or back and then tilted it down and, and got underneath of the the white or the uh, green monster and then I winched it up on there and I basically tilted the bed down and I rolled it up and I just rolled it on out of there and of course I you know I dropped it and pulled the truck over there you know i took it off the rollback and took it over there and parked it and you know the rollback uh you know it did its job you know i was saying earlier about that rollback you know it can do things that the white truck can't do you know but then again the white truck can do things that the rollback can't do you know so the white truck raised it up in the air and i blocked it up and i came back with the uh with the rollback and scooped it up so you know it was a basically a joint effort between these two great trucks of mine, you know, the rollback doing her job and then the white truck doing hers. So, you know, the trucks are nothing without the guy wheeling it, you know. What's a truck, you know, without the guy steering it, you know? Uh, nothing, you know. What's what's a sword, you know, without the, with the hand, without the hand, you know? What's a wrench or a screwdriver without the man in the hand turning the wrench? You know, it, it's basically irrelevant. It doesn't, you know, it won't do no good. You got to have the man to run it, but you got to have the equipment, you know, for the man to run. So luckily I, you know, I worked for Eads Towing, Dave Eads, and, you know, I was taught, you know, early on that the power of uh, these, these machines and these vehicles. And I got that truck there because I worked for Dave, found it out on the road when I was working for him running a record, and I found that truck. And running his rollback, uh, well, you know, here we go. Because of my, well, because of my son, you call, we haul, right on the front bumper. You call people, we'll haul. Uh, yeah, because of Dave Eads, I had to have a rollback. Uh, my son helped me get this truck. We traded a dune buggy, and we got this We got this rollback. Uh, the guy was really into Volkswagen. So, yeah, I had a dune buggy I had bought and purchased, and I traded this guy a dune buggy for this rollback. And, yeah, it was a, it was a by the century. You know, this, this rollback is just a beast. With his big block uh, 454 engine that it has, and I believe that engine came out of a motorhome. And the reason I'm saying that is you can see the canister over there for the power steering. That is a motorhome power steering canister, and this this engine came out of a motorhome. So it, it's a low miles engine. I don't know what year engine it is. I have to talk to my buddy Crocker, and he'll be able to tell me where the numbers are. And we'll find out what year this engine is. I'm going to say it's probably late 70s. It's a black motor. Could be 80s. Um, I do see a red intake on it, looks like. There's been some parts swapped around on this truck. You can see that power steering is not their normal power steering pump. It's got that hose right there, and it runs up to this reservoir here. And there's your power steering reservoir. So this is definitely a motorhome engine. 
but it's a beast. I mean, this this truck will pull the house down. And well, it uh, you know, here's the house, the green monster. But then again, like I said, if it wasn't for the white truck, you know, raising it up to the moon, I couldn't have used this truck to scoop it up underneath. So it took a, you know, combination, you know, it took a you know, joint effort of the two trucks, you know, the rollback and the white truck to uh, get it out, you know. It was either that or call somebody to have them come do it. I wasn't going to do that. So, yeah, we, uh, you know, we worked these two trucks like a fiddle. And, you know, I worked on it yesterday, and I turned around, and my buddy Ron Doe gave me the idea. He's an old tow guy. He said, use the rollback, use the boom truck, you know, or the white truck. And I used them both. You know, I raised the, that truck up to the moon, the, the uh, back of it, blocked it up, pulled the white truck away, left the white truck over in the field just in case I got stuck with the, with the rollback. Then I backed the rollback underneath of it, scooped it up, and drug it up on the bed. You know, this truck is, uh, you know, it's the real deal Holyfield. You know, this 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 truck is, you know, you, you, I mean, I don't know what I can say else I can say about this truck. This truck is just awesome. You know, it's a, it's a monster in, in its own right, the rollback. We love the rollback. We love the wide truck. You know, if it wasn't for these two trucks to bail us out of all our trouble we get into around here, I don't know what we'd have done. But there's a new car we're going to be showcasing. That's the, the Tempest. Uh, that used to be my car. I sold it to my son. I traded it actually for this car. I wanted this car, and he wasn't going to just give it to dad. And obviously, he want, he had something. I had something he wanted, and he had something I wanted. So I traded him the Tempest, even even Steven, for the Skylark. And I got my Skylark, and I'm happy. And he got what he wanted, you know. So now I'm wondering, did I make a mistake? You know, you guys tell me. Should I kept the sky? Should I kept the Tempest? my poncho or should i you know did, and did what i did which i traded the poncho for the buick and i just love this buick i still love the buick i do love the poncho the pontiac you know they call it a poncho pontiac poncho i do love it but uh you know it did it, it was uh in total disarray i didn't have the money and the, and the funds to you know put into what my son has put into it i put the engine in it uh and the exhaust he paid for the exhaust that johnny morehouse put that exhaust on you can see that exhaust sticking out the back. There's one pipe, and the other pipe's right over there. There's the other pipe. It's just she's dual bazaar with cherry bombs. It sounds good. We heard it run uh, running for the first time last year, and it was really, really nice to hear it. We bought this engine for a hundred bucks from my buddy Timmy, who owned a junkyard over there in Augusta, Kentucky. And he bought the HGI distributor for it. He bought the MT valve covers for it. He bought that GTO uh, reproduction air cleaner. He bought the radiator. Uh, my son spent a lot of money. Uh, there's a brand new fuel line run right here that I run on it. So, yeah, you know, it's, this car's coming together. Uh, you know, we've got to do brakes, tires, finish the cooling system, belts, hoses. And, uh, you know, probably going to put a fuel cell in it. And yeah, this thing will be perfecto. I do got lower quarter panels for it. That get, get, basically comes up to right about here. And it'll get rid of all that cancer down there. I have lower quarters he bought for it. So I got a lot of parts for this car. Uh, you know, it's just been so hot. And of course, I'm going to be starting on this and the Mustang. And, you know, doing some cleanups and on them other cars. You know, the, the Catalina, the Fifth Avenue. I still got to finish cleaning it. My red Mustang. We got his blue Mustang. We got a lot of things going on here at Beamer Sun Garage. And you can see the sun's going down. Thank God. It's been such a hot day today. But we got the green monster out of her predicament over there. And it's a blessing. I didn't want it to, you know, continue to lay in the creek for another, you know, day or two. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. So you probably won't see us tomorrow. But we'll be back. We're Beamer and Sun Garage. We need you to subscribe. We would appreciate it. We appreciate every subscriber we have. We've got 82 now, people. We're coming up in the world. We're not going anywhere. We're Beamer and Sun Garage. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please leave a comment. What you know? What do you What do you want to see next? You know, let us let us know. What do you think of this video? We named the kitten the no name kitten. That is Bugs. Now we we got a uh, well actually a suggestion in our suggestion box. And then that kitten is now named, and no trespassing here at Beamer and Sun Garage unless you call first or message me. Send me a, a, a friend request on uh, Facebook, 
a friend request on uh, PlayStation 4. I'm on there as uh, Mr. Mock 1969, Xbox One as Mr. Mock 1968. Uh, like I said, we're on Facebook. We're everywhere. Uh, don't forget, Femur and Son Garage, we are a force to be reckoned with. We won't be beat. We won't give up. We're here to stay. We're here for the long haul. Uh, well, we need you people out there to help us. So if you want to see Beamer and Sun Garage, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your coworkers, tell people at school about us. Uh, we need subscribers. We're at, like I said, 82. We're trying to get to where we've got to go. And, uh, but we can't do it without you people. You people are what make us whole. So we got to have, uh, we got to have you people. Oh, we got this roll cage that I just outfitted to this uh, go-kart for my son. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be neat. He's like, what do you get a roll? What do you get that for, Dad? Because Dad thinks it's cool. So, yeah, we got a roll cage coming together on the go-kart. We still need a magneto, but we're going to get a magneto. we got a roll cage going on. we got a couple extra roll cages for some of the other cars we got. So things are happening here at Beamer and Sun Garage. Don't miss out. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you subscribe. And don't forget us. We're Beamer and Sun Garage. And we'll see you next time at Beamer and Sun Garage.